everyone, my name is New Flower Girl, but you can call me Demi, and today's podcast is about Mick Schumacher. Now, you might be a bit confused about uh, as to why I'm doing a podcast now. Well, if you're not in my Discord, I would highly recommend going to it. It's in the description down below. Uh, basically, because I don't have any inspiration for the Thursdays videos, um, I've decided to do weekly podcasts. So, um, I might run out of inspiration there, so if you have anything you want to, you know, learn about, uh, for example, grass snakes, because yes, they had a conversation about grass snakes, um, let me know in the comments down below and I will find out everything you need to know about it. And, um, yeah, today I've decided to do Mick Schumacher, um, Schumacher. Next week I'm gonna do Nikita Mazepin. Uh, because he deserves some attention as well. Some positive attention. Um, but yeah. Happy Pride Month everyone. Because it's Pride Month in uh, the US. If you're watching this in America and stuff. In the uh, United States. Same thing really. <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah. Hope you enjoy. And let's go ahead into the podcast. Mick Schumacher born the 22nd of March 1991, is a Swiss-born German racing driver. He races for Haas in Formula 1 and he's a member of the Ferrari Driver Academy. He began his career in karting in, 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 20, in 2008, progressing to the German ADAC Formula 4 by 2050. After winning the 2018 FIA F3, a European Championship, Schumacher progressed to Formula 2 in 2019 and won the 2020 Formula 2 Championship. He is the son of seven-time Formula 1 World Champion Mike Sch uh, Mi uh, Michael Schumacher and nephew of Ralph Schumacher. I should actually do a podcast about Ralph Schumacher, really. Just, you know, to have all the, all the Schumachers in there that have done racing. But we are about we are here to talk about to learn about Mick Schumacher. Mick Schumacher was born and grew up in Switzerland, living in hard word Fufflens Le Chateau until 2008 and then in Gland. You know, G L A N D He is the son of record-breaking seven-time Formula One world champion Michael Schumacher and Western riding European champion Corina Schumacher. His uncle Ralph Schumacher is a retired racing driver. His cousin Dave Schumacher, I should also do one about him, is, race, is a racing driver as well. Schumacher is the step-nephew of Sebastian Stahl and grandson of Elizabeth and Rolf Schumacher. Schumacher was skiing with his father when Michael suffered a life-threatening brain injuries on the 29th of December 2013. In March 2017, Mick first talked publicly about his father, describing him as my idol and my role model. Before the start of the 2017 Belgian Grand Prix, he drove his father's world championship winning Benetton B194. He drove another of, it, uh, of his father's championship winning cars, Ferrari F2004, in a demonstration before the 2000, in the 20, just before the 2020 Tuscan Grand Prix at Mugello to mark Scuderia Ferrari's 1000th. Formula 1 race, wearing his father's helmet for the occasion. Now we're going to dive into his career. Schumacher started his motorsport career in 2008. To avoid attention because of his famous father, he started his career under, the, under, not under, under a different name. Mick Betch, using his mother's maiden name. 
In 2011 and 2012, Schumacher drove in the KF3 class at the ADAC Card Masters, ending in 9th and 7th, respectively. In the Euro Winter Cup of the, F, uh, of the KF3 class, he was 3rd in 2011 and 2012. And in 2012, was 3rd in the KF3 rating DMV Karting Championship. In 2013, he finished third in the in the German Junior Car Championship and the CIK FIA Super Cup KF Juniors. In 2014, Schumacher used the name Mick Junior and started international and national junior championships, ending the season in second in the German Junior Card Championship, as well as in the European and World Championships. Although he did not race in karting under his real surname, his successes in karting were picked up by, interna by the international press. So if you were there while watching, the secret has now been revealed. <laughs> He's probably already revealed it himself. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> At the end of 2014, he completed test drives for Jensa Motorsport in a Formula 4 racing car. In 2015, Schumacher started racing in Formula classes for the first time, racing for Van Amersfoort Racing in the ADAC Formula 4 using the Schumacher name. In 2016, Schumacher remained in AC, ADAC Formula 4, but switched to Prema Power Team, a team known for its close links to the Ferrari Driver Academy. He also entered the Italian F4 Championship and finished runner-up in both championships to Joey Marson and Marcos Siebert, respectively. And now, and then he went to Formula 3. In November 2016, Schumacher made his first appearance in Formula 3, in, a, in Formula 3 mach machinery, taking part in the MRF Challenge, a championship based in India. He completed the Upper Formula 2000 class and finished the series in third place, con uh, collecting four wins, nine podiums and two pole positions. Schumacher finished behind Har uh, Harrison Newey, and Joey Marson, but ahead of his future Formula 3 and Formula 2 competitors Yuri Phipps and Felipe Drogovic. In April 2017, Schumacher made his debut in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship with Bremer Power Team. He finished the season in 11th place, with his best finish being a third place at Monza. Schumacher was the lowest finisher of the four Prima drivers. However, he was the third best placed rookie in the championship. Schumacher continued driving for Prima in the 2018 championship. He suffered a slow start to the season, eventually taking his first win at the 15th race of the year at Spa Francorchamps, almost halfway through the season. Prior to this race, he sat in 10th place in championship, 67 points behind championship leader Dan Tem. However, Schumacher dominated the latter half of the season, taking 7 more wins, including 5 consecutively. He ended the season as champion, 57 points clear of 2nd placed Tictum, taking 8 wins 14 total podium finishes, 7 poles and 4 fastest laps in Formula 1 um, and in um, obviously in the FIA classes, so FIA, Formula 3, Formula 2, Formula 1. If you get the fastest lap and you're in the points, then you get an extra, then you get a bonus point. It's all, it's, it just makes it a bit better. Um, they, I think they added that in in 2019 or in 2018, basically when the Halo came in, I think. And it's been here ever since, and it has made 
such a difference. Because if, if, um, if the leader is just one point ahead of you, or you, you're both tied at the end of the uh, at the end of the season, but you, on the last lap, of the race, get the fastest lap, you win by one point because of that fastest lap. It's amazing, you know. But then we now we're gonna go to Formula Two. Schumacher moved to the FIA Formula Two Championship in 2019 with Prima Racing alongside Jean Gale, Gale, I think. At the first round of the season in Bahrain, Schumacher started 10th and finished 8th after passing Machu Sita. I'm just going to pronounce the last name because uh, name, I can't do the first name. But we all know who I mean with Machu Sita. On the final lap, giving him a reversed grid pole position. That's a thing in Formula 2. Um, in Formula 2, you have a, a main race and a feature race. Uh, the main race is just a normal race, and um, the feature race is uh, is sometimes a sprint race, or not, <laughs> just with rolling start. Um, but um, because the Formula Two has two races, they reverse the grid, so um, those who are in eighth, they get full position. Um, and yeah, just that. <laughs> what a sprint race in which he finished sixth. Schumacher started from seventh at the feature race in Baku, but was forced to, into retirement after a spin. We don't know who that was. Uh, I will look into it. I think I, I'm, I'm probably gonna look into it. But he was forced. Yeah, he was forced into retirement after spin. He recovered from 19th to finish 5th in the sprint race. He failed to score points at Barcelona, suffering a collision with the first in the first race and a time penalty for an illegal overtake on Jack Aitken uh, in the second. At Monaco, Schumacher collided with multiple cars in the feature race, bringing out a red flag. He would fail to score points in either race. A do double retirement came at the circuit Paul Richard, which is France. It is a nice circuit, it's just flat. <laughs> but it has no gravel, so you can just straight line it. If you're playing it on the F1 game, you can just turn off rules and then you can go to to the to the circuit in France and then straight line every straight line every corner. It's amazing. Um after he was involved with a collision, uh, in a collision with teammate Galil in the first race and suffered a puncture in the second race. A puncture is basically uh, a hole in, um, in a tyre. Basically your tyre blows up. That's what they call puncture. Schumacher stalled on the grid at the Nürburgring and finished 18th in 18th place before uh, a charge through the field in the sprint race saw him finish 4th. Another sprint race point finish came at Silverstone with 6th place. He finished 8th at the feature race in Hungary, taking a reverse grid pole for the sprint race. And holding to the position to take his first win in Formula 2. Schumacher qualified 6th at Spa-Francorchamps. But both races were cancelled due to an accident that had caused the death of Antoine Hubert. At Monza he retired from the feature race from a power issue, but recovered to finish sixth in the sprint race, also achieving the fastest lap. He retired from both races in Russia after an engine issue in the first and a collision with Alessi in the second. <laughs> Schumacher finished the season with ninth and eleventh places, place finishes in Abu Dhabi. He ended the season in 12th place in the championship with 53 points, considerably ahead of teammate Galil, and took one win and one fastest lap. He continued with Prema in the 2020 FIA Formula 2 championship, joined by reigning FIA Formula 3 champion and fellow Ferrari Academy driver member Robert Schwartzman. In the feature race in Australia, he went off while battling Callum Islet for the race lead. 
in the second round at the same circuit, his fire extinguisher went off in a sprint race. Basically, if that happens, you basically can't see a thing. In Hungary, Schumacher bounced back with a double podium. He then went on to run uh, on a run of five consecutive podiums from Spain to Monza, including a win in the feature race at Monza. And took the championship lead at Mugello. He won the feature race at the next round in Russia and came third in the sprint in, in the sprint race, which was shortened due to a crash between Luca Giotto and Jack Aitken. That race did not restart, basically because Formula One was also driving there. But anyway, at the Bahrain rounds, he qualified in 10th place and rose up to 4th in the feature race. He finished 7th in the sprint race. As a result, Callum Eilert was able to bring the flick down to 14 points, going into the final round on the outer track at the same venue. In Sakia, Schumacher qualified a career worst 18th following an accident with Roy Nizani. He produced a good recovery race, up to, up to 6th with fast slap. This meant that the points gap stayed the same going into the final race. In the sprint race, Schumacher flat spotted his tyres while fighting for the lead which led him defending from Eilert for the first half of the race. After a few more lockups, he pitted for softs, dropping him out of the points. As a result of hard attacking and defending, Eilert's tyres didn't fare much better, and he, and he too slowly fell out of the points. This result confirmed Schumacher as the 2020 FIA Formula 2 champion. And now, recent times, Schumacher was announced to join, a dr to join as a driver for the Ferrari Driver Academy on the 19th of January in 2019. Schumacher followed his father's footsteps and cited Ferrari's big part of his heart and his special ties with the team within his family from childhood as a significant part of joining the team's academy. On the 2nd of April 20, 2019, Mick Schumacher made his debut behind the wheel of a modern Formula 1 car, piloting Scuderia Ferrari's F, uh, SF90 during the first day of in-season testing at Bahrain International Circuit as the only de deputant in the field. During the morning session of testing, Schumacher recorded a personal best time of 1 minute 32.552 from 30 laps, placing him six fastest among other drivers after rain stopped the session twice. In the desert. In the desert there's rain. I, I, is the, is, what is wrong with this world? I mean, it's, ra it's, it's raining in the desert. Like, what the heck? Throughout the remainder of the day, Schumacher put in another 26 lap to set a final time of 1 minute 26, 29.976 on the softest, softest tyre of, of, of the softest available tyre compound of which remained to be the fastest time until Red Bull Racing's Max Verstappen set a lap of 1 minute 29.379 5 minutes later. After Tuesday's sessions uh, after Tuesday's test session, Schumacher said he felt at home with Scuderia Ferrari and, re and re relished his first drive. I really enjoyed today, he said. I felt like it felt like home in the garage from the very first moment with a lot of people that have known me since I was very young. The SF90 is incredible because of it or because of the power it has but it's also smooth to drive and that's why i enjoyed my uh, why i enjoyed myself so much schumacher added that he was impressed by the braking power of a modern formula one car it seemed to me that you could brake later 
and later, and the car would have made the turn anyway. I would like to say thank you, Ferrari, for this incredible opportunity. Schumacher was to continue in-season testing for Alfa Romeo the following day. Schumacher was due to was due to make his Formula One practice debut at the 2020 Eiffel Grand Prix in the first practice session, driving for Alfa Romeo Racing in place of Antonio Giovinazzi. Due to the bad weather conditions, the session was cancelled, meaning that he performed no running. Schumacher made his Formula One practice debut at the 2020 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. In the first, fa- in the first practice session, driving for Haas in place of Kevin Magnussen. He later made an appearance for Haas in the 2020 Young Driver Test. Ahead of the 2021 season, Schumacher requested to use the MS- MSC ab- ab- <laughs> hard word. Abrevian, ab- abbreviation for his abbreviation shown on the TV coverage. MSC was the abbreviation that was used by his father, Michael Schumacher, to distinguish distinguish him from Michael's brother, Ralph, whose time in Formula 1 coinced. Schumacher had previously raced under the SCH abbreviation. Schumacher drives for Haas in 2021 after signing a multi-year contract alongside Nicky de Mazepin, with whom he raced in go-karts. His number is 47. After the Formula 1 season finale at Abu Dhabi, the team principal, Mattia Binotto Ferrari, <laughs> said that he expected Schumacher to have a very difficult first season, but added that he believed he could drive for Ferrari as early as the 20. 20- 23 season and we now have some notes i think no we don't so basically this is it um yeah this is all that there is um to know about mick schumacher of course there is still a lot more to learn about him um because he's only just entered formula one um and yeah So, um, maybe when, um, well, when there, uh, when there's more about him, for example, he's joined Ferrari and stuff, um, I will make it, I'll make it notice. I will then make a podcast about Ferrari. Um, so yeah, that's it. Another quite a short one. Next podcast, next week's podcast is about Nikki de Mazepin. Um, just so that I have to ask guys out of the way. And um, Nikki de Mazepin was coincidentally mentioned in this one. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please smack that like button and also subscribe. Um, at 50 subscribers, I am going to dye parts of my hair purple. Uh, not in the way of highlights, but just... Um, in the way that Gamora has it. It's just the bottom parts. Um, and yeah. Also leave a comment down below if you want to learn about something. Um, if, if it is either an animal. About a Formula 1 driver. From way back. Uh, about about just about anything. You know. Maybe you want to learn more about the Olympics. Or about Pride Month. Um, I can do that. I just need to find the information, therefore I have Google, and I will make that podcast. So if you have any suggestions for future podcasts, leave them down in the comments below. I'll put them on my list. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on my live stream tomorrow. Um, The live stream will probably be in the evening, because um, it is also Formula 1. Um... Basically, I should actually tell the times for you guys. So, let me just quickly go to that. So, 
Oh god. Wrong type. Moto GP times. Okay, so it wants to load. Um Moto GP is in Spain in Catalonia. It does not want to load. Thank you. Yeah, they're in Barcelona and the Moto GP race starts um starts at three. Um, yeah, it's a bit later than, than other times. So that basically means that the Moto3 race is at 12, if I'm correct. The Moto3 race, a uh, Moto2 race, is at 1 minute, uh, 1 hour 20, 1, 20, uh, 1, uh, 1 p.m. 20. And the MotoGP is at 3 p.m. And the Formula One, they're in Baku. Azerbaijan. And that. Azerbaijan. <laughs> and that one is 2 p.m. Dutch time. This is all Dutch time, okay? <laughs> I'm saying this all Dutch time because. Um, it is on that it's displaying on Dutch time. So GMT plus one, all the times I just said. Um in the UK it's just normal times, uh one hour back. Um but yeah. That's it. I'm gonna go and have my lunch, probably. Um because I've got it half school and stuff. Um and yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow during my live stream. Thank you all for uh, for watching and yeah. See ya.